Good Tuesday morning, everybody. Chris here with High Seas Cruising, and welcome to today's video. Got a lot of cruise news stories to cover with you today, and we're going to start off talking about Norwegian Cruise Line. Got a couple stories from Norwegian, but first up, Norwegian Cruise Lines, they are making a change to their military appreciation program. Now, Norwegian Cruise Lines launched their military appreciation program back in 2022, and it does give, and it does give active military veterans, retirees, and their spouses a 10% discount off of their cruise fare. And they also receive special amenities and experiences while on board the ship, a special reception, a welcome on board packet, and some other items. And now Norwegian is going to expand the program and it's not going to be just U.S. military and U.S. veterans. They are now going to include Canadian military and Canadian veterans. So Canadian service members, veterans, and their dependents from the Canadian Army, the Royal Canadian Navy, Royal Canadian Air Force, and the Coast Guard will all be eligible. So really good news to our fellow brother and sister service members from the North. And the way service members do this is you go on and you have to get validated through ID.me, which is a digital identity network. And once you are set up in that system, that's all you got to do before booking your Norwegian cruise through the Military Appreciation Program. Now, also from Norwegian Cruise Lines, they have announced that the Norwegian Encore, she's going into dry dock. She's going to get refurbished. She's going to get some upgrades. She is going to get some updates. And this will happen over a two-week period from November the 18th to December the 2nd here in 2024. Now, the upgrades the Norwegian Encore is going to get, well, they're essentially the exact same ones that were done for the Norwegian Joy. And that's going to be upgrades to two of the dining venues, redesigned suites in the Haven, and the addition of 24 new balcony staterooms. She will also receive a new Spice H2O Outdoors Adults Only Area, and that will have multiple new hot tubs, new day beds, pool, and a bar. They will be adding a Cagney Steakhouse and a Tapanaki Grill. And the 24 new balcony cabins, well, they're going to be taking over sections of the observation lounge towards the front of the ship. Now, of course, Norwegian says these upgrades are based on guest surveys, guest satisfaction. This is what the guests want. And for some of that, yeah, I believe it's true. A new adults only area. I can see where guests get behind that. Updated dining venues, of course, guests can get behind that. But do guests really want to give up sections of the ship, such as the observation lounge, to add new cabins on board the cruise ship? Did guests really want 24 new balcony staterooms on the ship? Or is that part really more about Norwegian and their profitability? Each one of those balcony staterooms is estimated to generate almost $150,000 each per year in revenue. And when they decided to do that on the Norwegian Joy, well, that really wasn't a hugely popular decision. But I don't know, what do you guys think about the Norwegian Encore and her scheduled upgrade? Now, the Norwegian Encore is not the only ship going in for some major upgrades. Royal Caribbean's Allure of the Seas, she is going in for a $100 million upgrade. So work is scheduled to begin in March of 2025 go all the way through April of 2025 because they are doing quite a bit to a lower the sea. She is getting a lot of upgrades done. First, she is going to be getting a redesigned resort style pool deck and the pool deck on Utopia of the Seas. Well, that is a good kind of blueprint for what it is going to look like or possibly look like on Allure of the Seas. And that will include Caribbean style decor, updated hot tubs, and the addition of a lime and coconut bar. Now the Ultimate Abyss Dry Slide will finally be added to the back of the Allure of the Seas. And this is the giant slide starting all the way at the top, heading all the way down to the bottom that you see on other Oasis class ships. It's two slides going down side by side. That way you can race somebody. And up near the entrance to the slide, they are adding a shaved ice bar to get different flavors of ice. They will be adding water slides and a splash away bay for the kids, including a special area reserved 
just for the little ones that are still in their diapers. They will be adding a pesky parrot tiki bar, and there will be an addition of some new restaurants on board, and some examples will be Playmakers, Sports Bar and Grill, The Mason Jar, and El Loco Fresh. And when it's all said and done, there are supposed to be 20 different places to eat on board the ship and 17 bars. Now, they are also adding some additional entertainment on board. They are going to be installing an escape room called the Apollo 18 Lunar Landing, which will be themed after, of course, a moon landing and glow-in-the-dark laser tag. And finally, the kids' spaces on board the ship are going to get a complete update as well. So lots of changes coming to Allure of the Seas. This is not necessarily a list of all of them. This is just what Royal Caribbean has talked about and put out so far. And it will be exciting to see all of the changes they have made when she returns to sailing at the end of her dry dock there in April of 2025. Now, originally, Allure of the Seas was supposed to have had these renovations done these updates done back in 2020. Of course, COVID caused that delay. They put them off. They canceled them. It's finally Allure of the Seas. She's going to go in. She's going to get updated. And when she comes out in April of 2025, real, I'm going to be excited to see all of the changes they have done on board the ship. And finally, we have some Carnival Cruise Line. I guess let's call it debunking of rumors, clarification of policies, something that seems to be becoming a normal situation week after week with Carnival Cruise Lines. And of course, this all starts from people getting on Facebook and other internet sites and simply spreading incorrect information, whether they're purposely being trolls, whether they are purposely spreading misinformation, maybe they think they're right and they're just wrong. I don't know where all of the stuff actually comes from, but week after week, Carnival has to come out and say, look, this is how it really is. This is what it really is. Stop believing what these people are saying on the internet. And we got some more of that today. So first up, we're going to talk about slot pulls on board cruise ships. Now, these are organized by the guests and they are allowed provided you follow some rules. You have to get with the casino host and the casino manager on board the ship in order to make arrangements to do so. And while it's not guaranteed that they will make it happen, that's at least where you have to start. And of course, it's going to depend on the time, the day, the popularity of the casino, other events they have going on the casino, but they will work with you to make it happen if possible. Now, that's the right way to do it. Now, what caused Carnival to have to clarify this? Well, it was somebody doing it the very wrong way, and that is standing in the casino, holding up a sign that says sign up for slot pull. And not only were they standing there holding a sign saying to sign up for their slot pull, well, they were selling tickets for said slot pool, which is a major no-no because you are not allowed to sell things or take money from other cruise passengers offering services on board the ship, like a slot pool, that you never went to the casino to make arrangements for. Now, she was told to stop. You're not allowed to do that, which, of course, prompted her to get angry, get upset, Right in comments and nasty worded letters to Carnival Cruise Line's brand ambassador, John Heald, saying her cruise was ruined over her being told she has to follow the rules. Of course, you know, that's not the reason she gives. She gives her cruise was ruined because they wouldn't allow her basically to do what she wanted. It didn't go the way she wanted and she wasn't following the rules, but it just ruined her cruise. So lesson learned. If you want to do a slot pool on board a cruise ship, get with the casino first, find out the rules, find out the requirements, set it up through them, because they do happen all the time. People set them up and participate in them all the time on multiple cruises. So if you just follow the rules, they can make it happen. And finally, a little clarification on mobility scooters. Now, once again, Carnival Cruise Line's brand ambassador, John Heal, had to put out this information after an unnamed YouTuber, that's where he said it came from, I guess posted a video and said, all Carnival Cruise Line passengers who wish to use a mobility scooter must register with medical proof. And they must do this prior to their cruise. And well, 
That's not true. Now, I don't know if this was put out on purpose, put out just to cause misinformation, or if perhaps this was a wording mistake. Because if you are going to use a mobility device on board Carnival cruise ships or the majority of cruise lines, you do have to let them know ahead of time through the special needs department. Now, you don't have to show proof of any type as to why you need the device. It's just to let them know you are going to have the device. So for an example, for Carnival, if you're going to bring a scooter on board, you, you register it with the special needs department and it is to make sure it's gonna fit through the cabin door. It's to make sure they know the number of individuals on board using mobility devices for safety purposes in case something happens and the ship has to be evacuated. Okay. They need to know who might need assistance and who might not. So to clarify, you do let the cruise lines know that you're using a mobility device, but you do not have to prove why you are using the mobility device. Just letting them know you're going to have one is all that is required. So which is why I do think maybe the original post on this one was more of a miscommunication than it was an outright misinformation story. But if anybody did see it, just know medical proof is not required for mobility devices on board cruise ships. Just a form you fill out that says you're going to have one. And hopefully that clears all that up. All right. And that is going to be our video for today. If you've enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you haven't done so yet, do me a favor and hit subscribe. It is free to do so. Helps our channel grow. Let you know anytime we put out a new video. Don't forget tonight. 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We will be live. Feel free. Come over. Join us. Get in the conversation. Share cruise news, cruise information, cruising stories, and just all kinds of whatever we end up talking about sort of stuff. Hope everyone out there is having a really great day. And like always, we will see you out on the high seas.